Hello everyone. Today I am going to discussing about the to find the optimum solution for a transportation problem by Moody method. So this model I will be discuss with one example problem. In the problem we have to find the optimum solution for a given transportation problem by Moody method. First we have to find the given transportation problem is balanced or not. For this we have to find the total supply and total demand for a given problem. Here total supply is 34 and total demand is 34. So total supply is equal to the total demand. Then given transportation problem is a balanced transportation problem. So now we have to find the initial basic feasible solution by any of the following methods such as northwest corner method least cost method and mam method for this problem we will find the initial basic feasible solution by mam method in the previous lecture we were discussed the how to find the initial basic feasible solution by mam method so kindly refer the previous video for mam method to find the optimum basic feasible solution this is the initial basic feasible solution here we are having the six allocations that is for S1 row D1 column and S1 row D4 column and S2 row D3 column and S2 row D4 column and S3 row D2 column and S3 row D4 column. So number of allocations are six allocations that is equal to the m plus n minus 1 here m equal to number of rows and n equal to the number of columns so total transportation cost is 19 into 5 plus 10 into 2 plus 14 into 7 plus 16 to 2 plus 18 to 8 plus 10 into so 20 into 10 that is total transportation cost is 779 here step 1 is completed now we will move to the step 2 that is we have to find the set numbers ui and vj for each row and column which is satisfying ui plus vj equal to the cij ij for each occupied cell which means we have to find the set numbers of ui for row which means we have to find the set numbers u1 u2 u3 for the three rows similarly we have to find the set numbers vj which means we have to find the v1 v2 v3 and v4 for the columns here i equal to row number j equal to column number and cij is represents the cost of transportation for for the one unit of product from i to demand to the j supply remember here we have to find the ui and vj values for occupied sales only here we having the five occupied sales five allocated sales so we have to find the vi sorry ui and vj values for only occupied cells and we have to use the relationship of ui plus vj equal to cij next we have to find the number of allocations for each row and the column here s1 row having the two allocations so these are the our allocations for the s1 row so that is the total number of allocations in the s1 row is two allocations and S2 row also having the two allocations. Similarly, S3 row also having the two allocations. And here, D1 column is having the only one allocation. D2 column also having the one allocation. D3 column also having the one allocation. And D4 column having the 
Next to draw the transportation table with only allocated cell values. Here, C11 is the transportation cost of one product from first supply to first demand. Just remember like this, C11 means cost for the first row and the first column. Similarly, C12 means cost of the first row and the second column. Just remember like this. Then we have to observe here D4 column, D4 have column having the maximum allocations that is set number V4, set number V4 having the maximum allocations. Let us consider maximum allocation set number is 0, here V4 having the maximum allocations, so V4 is we are considering the 0. Next to solve the D4 column which having the maximum allocations that is 3. So solve the these 3 cells. First we have to solve the these 3 cells we have to solve. See here we have to use the UI plus VJ equal to CIJ relation. So first to solve the C14 value we know that one C14 value is the 10 and also we know that one relation is C14 equal to U1 plus V4. So that is 10 equal to U1 plus V4. And here we are assuming that one V4 equal to 0. So U1 value is the 10. Next, we have to solve the C24 value. And we know that one C24 equal to U2 plus V4. And C2, C24 value is the 60. And we are assuming that V4 equal to 0. So U2 value is the 60. So next, next we have to solve the C34 value. And we know that one C34 equal to U3 plus V4. And C34 value is the 20. And we are assuming that V4 equal to 0. Then U3 equal to 20. So next, I will go for the to solve the V3 value. For that one, I will take the allocated cell value is the C23 value. So next, I am going for the C23 value. Here, we know that one C23 equal to U3, U2 plus V3. Then C23 value is the 40. And also, we know that one U2 equal to 60. Then here, I have to substitute. You will get the V3 equal to minus 20. So next I will have to solve the V2 value. For this one, I will go for the C32 value. We know that one U3 plus V2 equal to C32 and C32 value is the 8 and also we know that one U3 value is the 20. Then we have to substitute here. So we will get V2 value is the minus 12. So next I will go for I will go for solve the V V1 value. For this one, I will consider the C11 value. So we know that one U1 plus V1 equal to C11. And also we know that one C11 value that is 19. And also U1 value also we know that is the 10. So I have to substitute here U1 equal to 10 and C11 equal to 19. We will get here we will get V1 value is 9. Next I will go for step 3 that is find the net evaluation value for empty cells that is delta ij equal to cij minus of ui plus vj. Previous step we solve the allocated cells by using the relation of ui plus vj equal to cij. Here in this step we are solving the empty cells by using the relation of delta ij equal to C i j minus of u i plus v j. First empty cell is first row and the second column that is delta 1 2. So delta 1 2 equal to C 1 2 minus of u 1 plus v 2. We know the C 1 2 value that is 30 and also we know the u 1 value that is 10 and also we know the v 2 value that is the minus 12. So, substitute all the values in this equation. 
we will get the delta 1 to equal to 32. So next to my empty cell is delta 1 3 which means first row and the third column that is delta 1 3 delta 1 3 equal to c 1 3 minus of u 1 plus v 3. So we know the c 1 3 value that is 50 and also we know the v 1 value that is 10 and v 3 value that is minus 20. Substitute all these values in this equation we will get the delta 1 3 value that is 60. Next to my empty cell is delta 2 1 mean second row and the first column that is delta 2 1. So we know that one delta 2 1 equal to c 2 1 minus of u 2 plus v 1. c 2 1 value is the 70 and u 2 value is the 60 and v 1 value is the 9. So substitute all these values here we will get the delta 2 1 value that is the 1. Next empty cell is delta 2 2 which means second row and the second column. Second row and second column that is delta 2 2. Here we know the C 2 2 value is the 30 and U 2 value is the 60 and V 2 value is the minus 12. So I have to substitute all these values in the in this equation. We will get the delta 2 2 that is the minus 18. Next is delta 3 1 which means third row and the first column. We know that one delta 3 1 equal to C 3 1 minus of U 3 plus V 1. We know the C 3 1 value is the 40 and U 3 value is the 20 and V 1 value is 9. So I have to substitute all these values in the delta 3 1 equation. We will get the delta 3 1 equal to 11. So next to my empty cell is delta 3 3 which means third row and the third column that is the delta 3 3. So delta 3 3 equal to C 3 3 minus of U 3 plus V 3. So C 3 3 value is 70 and U 3 value is the 20 and V 3 value is minus 20. Substitute all this we will get the delta 3 3 equal to 70. Here we have to observe that one except the delta 2 2 we are getting the all delta values are positive value here delta 2 2 value is only negative value that is minus 18. Now I will move to the step 4. So that is if all delta ij is greater than 0 then solution is optimum and unique solution is exist. If all the delta ij is greater than or equal to 0 then solution is optimum but another solution will exist. If uh, at least one delta ij is less than 0 then the solution is not optimum and go to the next step. Here delta 2 2 is negative value that is minus 18. So we have to move to the next step that is the step 5. See the step 5. If at least one delta ij is less than 0, then choose the most negative value. Here we are having the only one negative value that is delta 2 2. The value is minus 18. Here cell S2 row and D2 column having negative delta value and considering that allocation value is plus x. Next we have to form a closed loop traveling position. First we should have to know what is the closed loop position. Here these two are the example for the closed loop position. Let us see here we started traveling from the initial allocation and traveled along with the allocations and if you reach to the initial allocation this travel we are calling as a closed loop position. See in the problem we have to start traveling from the allocation plus x and move to downward direction up to the allocation 8 then turn to right hand side up to the allocation 10 and take the turn top side 
up to the allocation to and have to travel up to the initial allocation that is plus x see this traveling position we are calling as a closed loop traveling position after that change the allocation values at the corner of the traveling position let us consider this is our traveling position so this is our traveling position here we have to change the allocation values at corner of the positions at each corner we have to change the allocation values let us considering initial allocation is plus x next to corner value is allocation value minus x which means 8 minus 6 here in this corner value will become 8 minus x next to corner is allocation value plus x see this is the next allocation corner here value is 10 so this allocation value will become 10 plus x next to corner is next we have to move to the another corner that is allocation value minus x which means in this position allocation value is the 2 and we have to modify that is 2 minus x next we change the allocation values at corner of the closed loop positions such as plus x 8 minus x 10 plus x and 2 minus x next we have to find the x value for this check the minus x positions and minimize it here 8 minus x and 2 minus x are the minus x positions among these two values 2 minus x is the minimum value then 2 minus x equal to 0 and we will get the x equal to 2 then substitute the x value in the above table and we will get the new allocations like this next we determine the set numbers u1 u2 and u3 for rows and v1 v2 v3 and v4 for columns by using the relation of ui plus vj equal to cij for only occupied cells so make a new table with only allocated cells and observe the number of allocations for each row and column here u1 u2 u3 and v2 v4 are having the maximum allocation of 2 among these any set number consider the value is 0 here i am considering the v2 value is 0 next we determine the all the set number values by using the relationship of ui plus vj equal to cij here we got the set numbers values are u1 equal to 21 u2 equal to 30 and u3 equal to 8 similarly v1 is 21 v3 is 10 and v4 equal to 12 next we determine the delta values for all the empty cells by using the relationship of delta ij equal to cij minus of ui plus vj so these are the delta values here observe that the all the delta values are positive so solution is optimum and a unique solution then total transportation cost will become 19 into 5 plus 10 into 2 plus 13 into 2 plus 14 into 7 plus 18 to 6 plus 14 into 12 that is total transportation cost is 743 so thank you